Hi everybody. So I am filming at home again. I am hiding in my son's bedroom because my kids are actually homesick today. So uh, this is my current office. Um, this is our very last video of the year. That's exciting. And um, today I wanted to talk to you about the prodigal son. The prodigal son is probably uh, my absolute favorite scripture story, my favorite parable that Jesus tells. And the story of the prodigal son follows in the book of Luke. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the gospels. They basically, they are everything that happens while Jesus is alive. And this parable follows the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. What these stories are meant to tell us about is um, what happens when somebody who is separated from God comes back to God, basically the rejoicing that takes place. So first I'm going to start with reading to you the parable, and then I am going to kind of explain things a little bit more thoroughly. I love this. I love this uh, parable so much because it it really lays out, like Jesus is laying out, like this, this is what God, this is what God thinks of you. This is the level of importance that you have in God's life. So let me pull it up so I can read it, and then we'll go through it. It's about... Um, three paragraphs. This is Luke 15 verses 11 through 31. So just bear with me. And this is Jesus speaking. He said, there was a man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had written to a far, written to a far off country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine came across, a, a severe famine arose in the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. And when he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here in hunger. I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him, felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called to one of the servants and asked, what is the meaning of this? And the servant said to him, your brother has come home and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But, this, but he was angry and refused to go in. So his father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you. I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never even gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came home who had devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. The father answered him, Son, you are, you are always with me, and all that is mine is also yours. Now, it's always important to look at these parables from a Jewish standpoint, because that's where our heritage comes from. The significance in this story that Jesus is telling, he describes a son that left his family. And in Jewish culture, there's, at this time especially, you didn't, you didn't talk to people who were um, not within your, in your group. So the Jews didn't, they didn't marry, they didn't have uh, relationships with people who were the Gentiles, people outside of the Jewish community. So we see this son who, you know, if we put this in like modern day perspective, I guess, he 
took a third of the property or half of the property went off and he was with prostitutes and he spent his money drinking and partying and things like that and you didn't do that you didn't you didn't participate with people that were not in your Jewish community but he did he left and so that would be the same thing as one of you taking what your family had worked hard to earn and just blowing it on drugs on um, you know and as it said on prostitutes things like that and then his son fell in need after he had burned everything up and he came back to his father because you know he had nowhere else to go he had nothing he came back and it says in the scripture verse when he was still a long way off his father caught sight of him when I when I think about this I imagine you know this this boy walking on the horizon and his dad being so overjoyed with seeing him in the far off distance, regardless of what this son had done, and running to greet him. Not only did he run to greet him, he gave him a ring. Now, the significance of this ring, the reason that this ring is in the story is these households had, um, you know, the, the ring that they would wear. It was the sign of the house. And what that meant is he was saying, everything that I have is yours again. So I know that you took everything that was already like willed to you and spent it, but we're gonna do it again. You get it all back. And that like overwhelms me. I imagine myself sitting like in a window, like waiting if one of my child, one of my childs, can't talk, one of my children were gone and sitting in the window and waiting. And this idea of seeing them coming in the distance and just being so overjoyed that I ran to them. And that's basically what God is saying that, or what Jesus is saying, that's what God does. He sees you a long way off. doesn't matter what you did. He, God just wants you. That's it. He just wants you back. And then we see the other side of the story where we see the other son. And I think that while some of us really relate to this idea of, we feel like we upset God, we feel like there's nothing we can do, um, to be in God's good graces or nothing we can do that God would want us again. But I think a lot more of us are probably going to relate to the second son where he was, he didn't take everything his father had. He stayed with his father. He stayed with his father. He did everything that his father wanted him to do. And then he sees his father celebrating the one that did everything, you know, everything wrong. And We've probably all felt that. That's one of one of these, like, that jealousy. It can be really insidious and really painful, and I really relate to this, too, because, I mean, I've definitely been that first son, but I've also been that second son where I felt like I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. I was doing everything God would want, and I just kind of felt alone. I just, I, I felt like, you know, here I am doing everything right, and I'm not happy or I feel lonely. And that's what that second son was feeling. And what the father says to that second son is, you just didn't realize that everything that I have belongs to you too. Everything I have is yours. And sometimes we need to come to a place where we realize, and this is what the, that means. Sometimes we need to come to a place that we realize how valuable we are, how important we are, and how much God loves us. And it's not always an easy feat to, you know, especially on your sad days, on your lonely days, to sit down and think, I am so wanted. I am so wanted and I am so loved. And God, you know, he wants me. My mirror, just by existing, that is that is proof that God wants me and I am, I am a value. And that's what he's saying to this. You just didn't realize it. He's saying this to his second son. You didn't realize it, but I've always wanted you and everything that I have has always been yours. Now, um, so your final writing prompt, I want you to look at this story and tell me which son that you feel like you are and why. And this is your last, your last assignment for the year so super exciting um i'm all i'm very proud of all of you i know that this year has been absolutely miserable it's been very difficult but i'm really proud of how all of you stuck through this and um you know as the summer goes through 
You guys have my number, you have my email, anything that you need, let me know. So happy Wednesday.